What's up guys, Quay here again. We are on our last week of our August series talking all about salvation. So I hope by now you can repeat to me every single main point from the last four weeks. We got, we're saved from wrath for relationship. We got the fact that God always seeks his own glory and his glory is in our salvation because he is the one who did it, not us. We got Ephesians 2, we look like you are saved by grace through faith, not the works of man, so that none may boast. Last week we said that salvation makes sense because of everything we see in the world, because of the longing we feel for redemption, for justice, that we're wired for relationship, that we can't fix it ourselves, that we're conscious of our sin, that salvation makes sense. All of our needs, all of our longings, every hurt that we have is fixed and finds its satisfaction in Christ Jesus. And that was last week. This week, our final week of salvation, we're going to talk about something I am super passionate about, and that is, now what? Right? We got salvation. We know what that is by now, and we've been looking at the word. What does God say that is? How does that change us? Now what? So you, maybe you just accepted Jesus Christ. You've just accepted salvation. Praise the Lord. That is a great thing. Maybe you grew up and you were six or seven when you accepted salvation. This is still for you. The question is now what? If we are saved in Christ Jesus from wrath, for relationship, for God's glory, now what? What do we do now? Here's the big point. Salvation is great for eternity because salvation saves us for a relationship with God forever, for the redemption of our bodies, for heaven, for the new earth, for eternity. We'll be in his presence forever. That is the best, most amazing thing we could ask for. It's what we're made for, to glorify God forever. But here's the question. That's great, right? For then, for later, for when I die. What does it have to do with right now? What does salvation have to do with right now? Three things here we're going to talk about and we'll break them down. Um, but here we go. First thing, we are saved from sin right now. We're saved from sin right? Next one, we're saved for relationship. We talked about that, but it's not just relationship when we get to heaven. It's relationship with God now. And the third one, we're saved for good. You can't lose your salvation. We're saved for good and we're saved to do good. So for good works, like we talked about, we looked at Ephesians 2. So those are the three points. I'm going to break them down right here. So recap, saved from sin, saved for relationship, and saved for good. That's what happens now. So first one, we are saved from sin. So when we accept Jesus Christ, when he gave us his righteousness, he justified us before God. So we're saved. We're going to have eternal life. And that starts now because before we had the Holy Spirit, before we were regenerated, made new in Christ Jesus, we had no hope to not sin. We were stuck in our sin. We're still held liable for it, responsible for it, because we're still doing wrong things. But we had no power to do the right things because we were so trapped in our sin. Christ Jesus beat sin. Something literally changed, and he gave us the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Now we have the power to fight against sin. Power not to be trapped in lying or in selfishness or in lust or in whatever that thing is. And there's lots of them for all of us. Whatever the sins that we are trapped in, we're not trapped in those anymore. Something has changed. We were slaves before to sin, and now we are free in Christ Jesus from those things. So we have the freedom to obey, to do what God says. Freedom against sin. We have the power from the Holy Spirit to do those things, to become like Jesus, to be sanctified. Sanctification is the process, lifelong process, of becoming more and more like Jesus, being transformed into his image. And the spirit we have to guide us and to correct us and to comfort us so we're saved from sin. We can fight against our sin right now, and we should. Number two, we are saved for relationship, right? That was all the way back the first week of August, said, saved from wrath for relationship, but that doesn't just start in heaven, when Christ is with us physically, it starts now. 
because we are holy and righteous in God's eyes, we are able to have a relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's when we pray. We are having a conversation with God. It's a relationship. When we're in the Word. We're hearing from Him. That's how He speaks to us. It's a relationship. It's comfort. It's peace knowing that above all things, He is in control and He's here and we're not alone. And so that's a really, really good thing. So we can play. We can enjoy God in His presence forever. We can pray. We can be with Him, spend time, and we can obey because that's what you do in a relationship. And even though we are saved, every time we sin, it strains that relationship. So if I have a, my dad, if I disobey him, it puts a block in our relationship. So the more we obey, the better our relationship will be with God because we will be pleasing and glorifying to him. So we have this relationship with God. Third, we are saved for good. We cannot undo it. You cannot lose your salvation. And here's why. Because you didn't do anything to earn it. You didn't earn your salvation. We talked about that almost every week. It was by grace you've been saved through faith. It is not the work of man, so that none may boast. You didn't save yourself. Jesus didn't. So who do you think you are to say that you can unsave yourself? If you didn't even save yourself to, the, to begin with. God doesn't change. And he has promised that he's going to finish the work he started. So you can't lose your salvation. So there's hope in that. There's We could talk for months about that. I want to someday, but let me just give you hope. You can't lose your salvation because you didn't earn it because it was a free gift that Christ gave you. You can't undo it. If you were really saved, really had Christ, you can't lose that. So don't worry about losing it. Worry about following him. The other part of that, saved for good, you're saved to do good. We talked about that also in Ephesians 2. You're his workmanship, saved for good works that you would walk in them. So that's how it affects now. Because we're saved from sin to fight against sin. Saved for relationship to play, pray, and obey God. Saved for good. We can't lose it. And saved to do good. To do what he's called us to do. To obey him. To put to death sin and to put on righteousness. To serve him. To tell others about him. To live in a worthy manner of his gospel. So hopefully this month as we've been looking at salvation has been helpful Discussion questions are in the description here if you're on YouTube, on the blog. They're right here. You got them. Let's look at this verse together. And I can't wait to see y'all in September in person at our kickoff event. I will see y'all soon. Goodbye.